Ah, yeah. Remember me. I'm Bruce Fury. It's the 31st of December, and welcome to the far too long delayed next episode of This Day in Scottish History. I'm in front of the Salutation Hotel in Perth. Now, just mentioning the Salutation Hotel is historical in itself. They say that this is the oldest hotel in the country. They say that it's been on the go since 1699. If you know any different, please give your answers uh, down below. William and Mary were on the throne. It was seven years after a Campbell presided over the massacre of McDonald's at Glencoe. Three years after the Bank of Scotland had been established, and the same year as Scots started to return from the ill-fated Darien expedition in Panama. Now, I'm more interested in something that happened here on this day in 1745. On the 31st of December, a birthday party was held in that hotel. Now, in the National Library of Scotland, there's an invoice that shows that they drank 40 bottles of claret, 9 bottles of Lisbon, 2 arrack, 2 dozen bottles of beer, a bottle of rum in a punch, and 3 bottles of Finsack. Finsack? What the hell is Finsack? Finsack sounds like the juice from a Scandinavian weightlifter's jockstrap. Finsack. It tastes as bad as it smells. Finsack. The one European import you won't miss, post Brexit. They must have drunk the bar dry. Imagine being so pissed that you go to the bar for a pint of Guinness and the landlord says, sorry mate, all we've got is Finsack. And you go, alright, I'll have a snifter. It must have been some party. Now we know about this party because John and Anne, the proprietors of the Salutation Hotel at the time, were staunch Jacobites. More than that, as Bonnie Prince Charlie marched south to Derby, he sent John to Northumbria with letters to raise the Jacobites there. Now, as it was, John got caught on the way with letters from Bonnie Prince Charlie. Given the choice between the hangy dry quartery thing or grassing up his mates, he let slip, the cat was out of the bag, it leaked, spilt the beans and started singing like a bird. Sounds like he'd drunk a bottle of Finsack and eaten a magic worm. Anyway, John and Anne turned King's evidence and gave up, gave up the names of everyone who'd been at the birthday party held for Bonnie Prince Charlie in the Salutation Hotel on the 31st of December, 1745. Now, I say the 31st of December. Some say that Bonnie Prince Charlie was born on the 20th of December. In fact, Bonnie Prince Charlie was born on the 20th of December and was still being born on the 31st of December. That's a long time to fanny about as the actress said to the gynaecologist. Let me explain. In 45 BC, Julius Caesar put in place a new calendar, the Julian calendar. Now, the problem with the Julian calendar uh, is that the year in the Julian calendar was several minutes shorter than the time it takes for the Earth to go round the sun. Now, when Christians started to celebrate Easter, that mattered. Now, Julius Caesar didn't know that. I mean, 45 BC, it wasn't even Christmas yet. Eh? Fact, do you know how to calculate Easter? Do you really? I used to think, because uh, I didn't know uh, how Easter was calculated until this morning Prince Charlie birthday the back, right? I used to think that Easter was calculated by the number of days after Christmas that Cadbury's could justify selling cream egg. No. It turns out Easter is always the first Sunday after the full moon following the vernal equinox. <laughs> now the problem with that is that after 128 years has passed, Easter ends up being a day early. And after another 128 years pass, it's two days early. And over time, this was eaten into chocolate manufacturers' profits. So, in 1582, Pope Gregory XIII came up with a new calendar, the Gregorian calendar. Now this calendar moved dates forward by 11 days, 
and skip leap years every 100 years, uh, unless the 100 years was divisible by 4 as well as 100. Anyway, that's the, the, the point. Uh, the calendar was quickly adopted by Catholic countries like Spain and France and Italy. Scotland fell into line because we wanted to cooperate with our European trade partners. But the English thought that this new calendar was a Catholic plot to scupper Brexit. They refused to adopt the Gregorian calendar. And then, in the 17th century, when James VI, Bonnie Prince Charlie's great great grandfather, became King of England, Scotland was forced to go back to the old Julian calendar. That's right. When Scotland was united with England, we lost 11 days. And we've never got those 11 days back again. They were inflation, that's 13 days. That's right. The English owe us two weeks paid holidays, during which we are going to eat haggis, drink iron brew, and watch reruns of Archie Gemmell's game in the 1978 World Cup, the 1990 Grand Slam game, and Jim Baxter taking the piss out your World Cup winners doing keepy-ups at Wembley. And there will be no 1966 in the new Scottish calendar, but there will be two Counting them, two 1314s, five Burns Nights, three St Andrews Nights, and every other day will be Hogmanay, will celebrate, and the salutation of Tell in Perth, monarchs will be crowned at Schoon, and the rightful king will be back on the throne. Anyway, Happy New Year. I mean, Doctor's going to be Lama alive. Cheerio, Drax.